Good afternoon. It's good to be home. I enjoyed the uh, keynote address, and I don't want to go over all the things about the man of origins, but when he's out of office, I'll be dancing like AOC. <laughs> we all will. To the mayors, to the reverends, Mr. Reverend Lawson in particular, I see you here. Uh, to all, all of my friends and all of the people who are here, you are the beloved community because you're here to remember Dr. King. Dr. King was a genius. He was a prophet. He was a great leader. And what we need to do today and what we're doing today is remembering his goodness, what he wanted for the world, and what the world still needs. He said the mark, arc of the moral universe bends slowly, but it always bends toward justice. Well, I think he's right, Reverend Jackson. We just didn't realize, and I don't think he realized, how slowly it bent. Because here we are 51 years later, and we're still dealing with the number one civil right that Dr. King talked about, and that's health care. Health care. And he came here to look out for working people who weren't getting a decent wage. We haven't raised the minimum wage in over a decade now. So the struggles that were there with militarism, and materialism, and racism still exist. We have a lot to do. I'm with a man who came here today to receive, later tonight, the I Am A Man Award. A great leader who doesn't just talk the talk, but he's walked the walk. And that's the distinguished whip the United States House of Representatives, James Clyburn. Mr. Clyburn represents South District in South Carolina. He was born in Sumter, South Carolina. And his father was an evangelical minister, activist evangelical minister. His mother was a beautician. So you know Jim Clyburn raised with his ear to the ground. He knew what was happening. And he got involved in civil rights early like so many other great people who stood up for their beliefs and civil rights, he went to jail. But jail was a good thing for Jim Clyburn, and that's where he met his wife. <laughs> he was involved in the civil rights movement in so many ways, and he's involved in Congress. He was elected in 1992. He's risen through the ranks. No other African American has been in a position as high as any higher than he has. Uh, Bill Gray was whipped before Jim Clyburn was in the House. He's so well respected among our colleagues. He is a great leader. I'm privileged to be with him today and for him to come to Memphis. He deserves the I Am A Man Award and do me, which I know you will do, the favor of giving him the proper reception which he deserves, the Honorable James Clyburn. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Steve, for being so kind. Thank you for the invitation to be here with you today. You know, those of you who look in on our proceedings in Washington, you know that we often refer to each other on the House floor as my good friend, when most times we don't mean it. <laughs> I do mean it when I call Steve my good friend, and I'm pleased to be here with him. My homeboy, Jesse, so good to see you. I'm from Sumter, South Carolina, Jesse is from Greenville, uh, and we played football against each other growing up. Uh, as uh, I don't ever tell you what the scores of those games were. Um, we were always on the losing end, but so good to see him. Reverend Lawson, so good to see you. Uh, I'm working very hard now with the Ro Connor. Uh, we believe this man is deserving of the Congressional Gold Medal, and we're gonna get it for him. The keynote address reminded me a little bit of King's letter from the Birmingham City Jail. You may recall as King sat in that jail, he received a letter from eight white clergymen saying to him that they thought that his cause was right, but his timing was wrong. And they wanted him to go back uh, to Atlanta. That in time, everything would be all right.
king answered them, saying, time is neutral. Time is never right. It's never wrong. It's always what we make it. And then King said this, I'm beginning to believe that the people of ill will in our society make a much better use of time than the people of goodwill. And then he said, we are going to be made to repent in this generation, not just for the vitriolic words and deeds of bad people, but for the appalling silence of good people. On this 51st anniversary of one of this country's darkest moments, let's break our silence.